Hello. Thanks for watching another episode of The Fat Vegan Chef. I want to say Happy New Year. Today I'm going to be making eggplant parmesan and this is by request from Instagram user Madam Youch. If you have any suggestions for me, please go to tfvc.org forward slash suggest. That way you can suggest recipes. Also, if you are on any of my social media, you can suggest there as well if you would like. Thank you very much for the suggestion, Madam Youch. You'll be able to find this recipe and a lot more at thefatveganchef.com. Go there and check all of my uh, social media accounts for updates and that kind of stuff. Without further ado, let's go ahead and find out what tools we're going to need to make this dish. The tools that you will need to make this dish are a couple of nice, big, thick pots, cast iron skillet or a cookie sheet, depending upon how you're going to do your eggplant, where you're going to either whether you're going to fry it or bake it, a knife, spatula, paring knife, some paper towels, a cutting board with a damp towel underneath. The damp towel keeps the cutting board from sliding around. So if you want to play it safe, put that damp towel underneath. Then we're going to need some tongs, a ladle, wire whisk, some spoons, three containers for your eggplant dredge, and some kind of a, a straining thing, which I'm using a holy pizza pan. So use whatever you want to use. Now we'll move on to the ingredients, shall we? Here we have the ingredients for the tomato sauce for your eggplant parmesan. I am making this from scratch. You can use canned if you would like. The sauce that I'm going to make today is going to be more of what I call a young sauce. It's going to cook for less than an hour as opposed to a ragu which usually cooks for a lot longer. This will give it kind of like a nice bright fresh summer type flavor which I want for the eggplants. A lot of times you'll see it as a ragu so it just depends upon what you want. If you want a nice rich dense um, sauce cook it for a few, a few hours or more. Uh, my suggestion on that would be to take the cast iron skillet, put that underneath your pot, put your temperature on like a low temperature and let it cook for a few hours, stirring it occasionally. Like I said, this one I'm going to make really quick. It's going to take probably about 40, 45 minutes to cook in total. Um, what we'll do is, let me go ahead and give you the ingredients. First thing you'll need is a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. I wouldn't use your high fancy um, quality olive oil for this because this is going to cook. So it's going to lose a lot of that subtle uh, flavor that you're going to get in the good stuff. But it is extra virgin olive oil. You'll need three quarters of a cup of small diced red onion four cloves of garlic that's been minced. Uh, you'll need three pounds of plum or san marzano tomatoes. And I'm going to reserve half a pound of this to finish at the end. Um, after we have prepared it in the, you know, after we've skinned it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to skin all this and then I'm going to take half a pound of it and save that to put it at the very end, but you'll see that. You'll need sea salt um, to taste. I'm starting with one teaspoon and then the rest of it I'm going to add the, at the end to give it the proper salt and pepper that it needs. One bay leaf, one half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, two teaspoons of black pepper, and again we'll use more at the end to taste. One tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of dried basil, one cup of vegetable stock, one teaspoon of grains of paradise, two bunches of basil that's been chiffonaded, and you'll also need pasta, and we're gonna cook this um, according to the directions, and we'll do this towards the end. 
for the eggplant, you will need two eggplants. We're going to cut this in half inch thick slices. One half cup of flour. You can use whole wheat if you would like. Two cups of panko breadcrumbs. Two cups of regular breadcrumbs. Two tablespoons of vegan parmesan. One tablespoon of nutritional yeast flakes. And we need more of these to put on top for garnish. Two teaspoons of dried oregano. Two teaspoons of dried basil. One half cup of sea salt. One half teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of black pepper. One half teaspoons of grains of paradise. A quarter teaspoons of red pepper flakes. You'll need one cup of unsweetened plain vegan milk. You can use any that you would like. Two teaspoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of egg substitute. You'll need one each of Daya's smoked Gouda and provolone slices, and I have shredded these. So this is the ingredients that we will need. Let's go ahead and start cooking. First thing we're going to do is slice our eggplant. And again, we're gonna do this in about half inch chunks or slices here. Now that we have this sliced, what we'll do is we'll put this on our pan. And once we have this on our pan, go ahead and take some salt. And this happens to be sea salt. Sprinkle it generously over the eggplant. We'll flip them over. Do the same thing for the other side. And then we're going to set this aside and let these sweat. Next, what we'll do is we'll get our tomatoes ready. What you want to do is take and cut some small slits on the stem side of the Roma tomatoes or the San Manzano tomatoes. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these in a pot of boiling water for about three minutes. And this is just enough to get the skins loose because we are going to be peeling the skins off these tomatoes. We're going to carefully put these tomatoes in the boiling water. And we're going to let these boil for three minutes or until the skin starts to come off the tomatoes. It's been three minutes. And they are starting to come off. So what we'll do is we'll take off the heat and we're going to carefully drain these tomatoes in the water and then we're going to let them cool and we're going to let them cool naturally we're not going to run water over them because if you run water over them it's going to take out some of the natural flavors of the tomatoes so we'll just let them cool naturally until they are able to be handled to take the skins off of them So I'll see you when the tomatoes have cooled. Our tomatoes have cooled enough. So now what we'll do is we'll start peeling off the skin. And if you need help, this is where your paring knife is going to come in handy to help peel it off here. We'll go ahead and peel all these tomatoes. And then we are going to dice them up.
Now that I have these peeled, I'm going to go ahead and dice them. got these tomatoes pretty much diced. Now what I'm going to do is take about half a pound of it and save it for later. And then next step, we're going to go ahead and start making our sauce. So I will see you at the stove. I'm heating up a thick pot right now and it should be hot enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in the olive oil. And that's one quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, but not your fancy schmancy stuff. Just some good high quality cooking extra virgin olive oil. Now we'll add in three quarters of a cup of red onion. And we'll let this saute for a while. We want the onions to start to become translucent. Our onions have started to come translucent, so I'm going to go ahead and add my bay leaf and my uh, four cloves of garlic that's been minced. I want to get out of there. Four cloves of garlic that's been minced. Let this saute for a moment. Now we will add our half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, two teaspoons of black pepper, one tablespoon of oregano, one tablespoon of basil, and our one teaspoon of sea salt. Give this a mix. And we'll let this saute for a moment or two. Our herbs are starting to smell now. When you start to smell them, they're starting to blossom. The oils are starting to come out. And now that they are, have that nice, good blossoming smell, we can go ahead and add our tomatoes and our vegetable stock. And again, this is one cup of vegetable stock. Now we're going to let this cook and simmer for about 30 minutes. I'm going to put a lid on it. And now we'll go ahead and start preparing the eggplant. We've got the sauce cooking, so now I'm going to go ahead and set up the breading station. And what you'll need to do is gather up your three containers for your breading and a couple of others to mix. And so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the white flour ready. We're going to put in the uh, half cup of white flour couple of good pinches of salt in there. This is sea salt and a couple grinds of black pepper and then we're just going to go ahead and stir that in there. So we'll set this one aside. Next what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the liquid going and actually we're going to do the liquid in this one. And we're going to put in the uh, the unsweetened uh, plain milk, and this is one cup of that. And it doesn't matter what milk you use. You can use coconut or almond or soy or rice or whatever. Um, but it needs to be unsweetened and unflavored. Next, we're going to go ahead and add the... Uh, two teaspoons of cornstarch and the two tablespoons of the egg substitute. 
and we're going to crisply whisk this in to try to get out any lumps and avoid lumps, which we're not going to really be able to avoid here, but we're going to go ahead and whisk it to get out the lumps. All right, we have that done. Now we're going to go ahead and go on to the next step here, which is the uh, top ready. Now we'll go ahead and make the top ready. And that is going to be uh, two cups of breadcrumbs, two cups of panko breadcrumbs, two uh, tablespoons of vegan parmesan, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast flakes, and this is two tablespoons of dried oregano, two teaspoons of dried basil, or no, excuse me, two teaspoons of oregano and two teaspoons of basil, one half teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and one teaspoon of uh, garlic, one teaspoon of black pepper, and, and half a teaspoon of grains of paradise. Go ahead and give this a good stir and just do this with your hand. Get it all nice and evenly distributed. Now what we'll do is put part of this in this container and once this starts getting old and bad we will continue to add to it throughout the process here. But we'll go ahead and start with this and we'll set this aside. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and prepare our eggplants. You can either bake or fry them. If you're going to bake them, uh, turn your oven on 375 degrees if you're going to fry them, get a nice thick skillet, like a cast iron skillet, and put in about half an inch of canola or soy oil in the pan, and then put in a, about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil in there. Again, you don't want to use the good stuff, you just want to use some like um, cheap, um, cheap extra virgin olive oil, but we do want some of that olive oil flavor to go into the breading, so that's why I'm putting the olive oil in there. Now what we'll do is our eggplants um, have sweated, so what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, pat them dry, get rid of some of that extra moisture that uh, has been seeped out of them. We have patted our eggplants dry for the most part. We do still want them to be a little bit wet. We've just patted the ex excess moisture off of them. We've got our breading station here, their flour, our liquid, and then our top breading, and then a pan to put it on. And now what we're going to do is this is going to be a two-handed operation. And so then that way you're not like making your hands too wet. Uh, but you may have to stop and wash your hands sometimes. If you want to wear gloves, you can wear gloves. Uh, but like I said, this is going to be a two-handed operation. What we'll do is we'll start by lightly coating the eggplant and then dipping it into our milk substitute and then coating it with some breading and then we'll put it in the pan and we just are going to continue doing this until all of the eggplant is breaded. Now you may have to make some, up some more milk, make up some more flour mixture, 
and that's okay. It all just depends upon how wet the eggplant actually is. I have the eggplants breaded. Next, we're going to go ahead and prepare the eggplant. Again, if you are going to bake it, bake it in an oven at 375 degrees. Should cook for about 30 to 45 minutes. We're going to go ahead and fry it. And we're going to fry it in oil that is going to be around 375 degrees. We're going to fry it until it's a nice golden brown. So let's go ahead and get this fried. All right, now I'm ready to fry the eggplant. Again, if you're gonna bake it, bake it for 30 minutes, clip it about halfway through. And I have my frying station set up here. I've got my raw eggplant over here, my hot oil here, and my draining station here. You can just use a pan with some paper towels if you want, or you can just strain it like this with some paper towels in it as well. Back here I have my sauce going. I've been stirring it every once in a while. And back in the back corner, I don't know if you can see or not, but back here I have my water coming up to a boil for my pasta. So it is getting close to that time. So I've got my heat at about medium high. Um, your mileage may vary. What you want to do to test to see if your oil is hot enough is dip one in there and see if it starts frying and I'm going to give it another moment or two here it's not quite there all right my oil is finally ready and we're probably about 10 minutes away from it being done I think the sauce is ready for the other tomatoes so I'm going to go ahead and put the half pound of reserved tomatoes in there now let this cook and again, let this sit for 10 minutes, and then the sauce will be ready. So let's go ahead and get our eggplant fried. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. And we'll do this in batches. And while this is frying, let me remind you that when you cook your pasta, you always want to cook your pasta where the water tastes like seawater. So you want to salt it pretty lit, pretty good. Um, the verdict is out as to whether you should put oil in it or not. I personally like to put oil in it just because it helps keep the noodles from sticking. It's just one more step in that direction but that's all up to you. Okay, the eggplant is now fried. Now comes another decision. Are you going to bake the eggplant in a casserole or serve them individually? If you're going to assemble it like a casserole, look back a few episodes ago and I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to make casserole like dishes. I am going to be making it as a individual plating. So that's what I'm going to show you today is the individual plating. Like I said in the previous act, if you're going to make a casserole, you'll need to get a casserole pan and assemble it um, using the tips that I shared at tfpc.org 
forward slash casserole. That's tsbc dot org forward slash casserole. There you'll find my video on some tips and techniques in assembling casseroles and lasagnas and uh, other type of types of dishes in the casserole family. I myself, I'm going to assemble this individually. Um, if you have a small family or if you're eating for two or one, um, this makes it look a lot nicer. This is more in line of what you're going to find in some of the uh, nicer restaurants out there. And this is what I'm used to when I make a plant parmesan. First thing you want to do is take just a little bit of sauce, put it on a plate that is going to be oven proof or toaster oven proof. These plates happen to fit the bill. And then put on a couple pieces of a plant. Put a little bit more sauce. We're kind of making a, like a little mini casserole here. And by the way, I have preheated my oven on the broil setting. If you are, if you made this ahead of time and you're serving it cold, what you can do is you can bake this in the oven at like 350, 375 for about 10 to 20 minutes until it's hot on the inside. And then after that, then you can go ahead and turn your oven on, on the broil setting. So I've gone ahead, I'm going to go ahead and do two layers. And you want to leave room here for your, for your pasta. So that's why I'm only using a third of this plate because two thirds of it will be for the pasta. So now I have some pretty good pasta and sauce there for eggplant. And, so and sauce, excuse me. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my cheeses. And this is Daya's smoked Gouda and Daya's provolone. And the reason why I mixed it is because most of the provolone that I am used to has a bit of a smoky flavor to it. I like that smoked provolone flavor. So that's why I've got the Gouda in there. You don't necessarily need to put in the Gouda, but like I said, I like it. So that's what I'm going to do. And so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put on a little bit of the vegan Parmesan on top of that. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven under the broil setting until the cheese is melted. And I do have another plate that I'm going to use to kind of help get this plate out of the oven. The plate will be extremely hot when you take it out. And so that's why I have this. And I also have a couple of heating pads as well that's going to help. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. And I will see you when the cheese is nice and melted. Right. I've got this out of the oven now. You can see the cheese is nice and toasted. And I like mine a little bit toasted like that. It gives it more flavor and character. You don't have to toast it that much. You can just bring it to the melting point if you would like. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and add some pasta. And a little bit of sauce on top of the pasta. Now if you want, you can garnish it with a little bit of nutritional yeast flakes. And a little bit of vegan parmesan. And to make it pretty, you can add a little bit of fresh basil on top. It's been chiffonaded. 
And that, my friends, is vegan eggplant parmesan. If you like this recipe, please click on the like button now. Share this recipe with your friends and family on your favorite social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Just look for the Fat Vegan Chef. To help keep me going, please go to tfvc.org forward slash donate and donate a dollar or two there. For those of you that are donating to me, I do certainly appreciate it. Your donations do help pay for the ingredients for this recipe. For this recipe and more, go to thefatveganchef.com and excuse me now, I'm going to dig in to this really yummy eggplant parmesan.